Hallelujah. Y'all give me a minute. Give me one minute. People are standing in line to get in this church to hear a word from God. Every seat is filled in every service with expectations, signs, wonders, and miracles. Our Sunday morning service at 10 o'clock, our Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock, and any other service that we might have. Every need in this ministry is met, and we are 100% tired givers. All our property is paid in full, and we owe no man nothing but to love. Every member in this church is healed, healthy, blessed, and prosperous. And we are reaching the world with our gospel through our prayers and support. This is a prosperous year for us. The doors of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure has been closed and we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us. The doors of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of our failures have been closed. And I don't speak. For this is a prosperous year for us. The doors of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure has been closed and we shall not know defeat. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised me, he will perform in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Y'all know we're not a traditional church. We don't do anything in a traditional way. We don't preach, we don't sing, we don't worship, and we don't praise. We, so we just ask you today, y'all just come in and be with us. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in some wonder, considered all the world thy hand, had made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then see my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, <laughs> how great thou art, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Father God, as I stand before your people today, I ask you, Lord God, to decrease me. I ask you to increase you. Father, I pray that you will send the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you may speak to me, Father, and through me. Lord God, I ask you, it is my prayer that the meditations that has been on my heart and the words of my mouth, Father God, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, I do pray. I pray that through my testimony, someone may be drawn closer to you. Amen. To my pastor, Lady Ross, and my sister, Lamey Gail Buckner. To the ministers, my children, my family, and you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, it is indeed, indeed an honor to stand before you today to give you the testimony of my life and how I became to stand before you today as one more servant of God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. My text will be 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 
you would stand what you're already doing before our life changes in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightfully divided in the word of truth. And my subject for this text is I found me. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell a story. Some people say when you ain't preaching, when you're telling testimonies, but I'm going to tell a story, and I'm going to preach the story. I want, I know that some of you done heard. No, first of all, what I want you to do is, now y'all be patient with me. I want y'all to get up one more chance. If you do not have a Bible, it's one on the back of the seat. And what I want you to do is I want you to lift up your Bible. And I want to hear each and every one of you say out loud, I'm in here. I'm in here. My story is in here. My salvation is in here. My deliverance is in here. My healing is in here. Whatever I need, whatever I want, God says, I have not because I ask not in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I know most of you in here have heard my story about being a crack addict, homeless, even sick on my deathbed. But what you have not heard about is the road that it took to get me to stand before you today. My, I thought, I thought, I thought, you know, he said we think, we can't think like he think. I thought, I knew the reason that I was standing here. But my salvation did not stand, start on the day that I was told that I was sick on my deathbed and I was given only 24 hours to live. My salvation started long ago when a man named Jesus hung, bled, and died on Calvary for me and got up on that third day. My salvation started, I could even go back when two praying women, anointed women of God, one was, which was Margaret Fisher, my grandmother, who I saw almost every night for what it seems like hours and hours. We used to say, Lord, is she all right? And touch her on her shoulder just to see if she was all right. On her knees praying. I could even say my salvation started when my mother, Carrie Fisher Ellis, who I knew that was praying for me while I was out there lost in darkness in a world of sins and drugs. I knew she was praying. I can even say my salvation started as a child because I received Jesus even as a child as my Lord and Savior. So my salvation did not start when I was told that I only had 24 hours to live. I just got to work on my salvation. I just went to work on it. See, once that I had got a revelation that I was not prepared to die, nor was I ready to die, I started working on my salvation. I made a bargain with God. Oh, my God. I made a bargain with him, and I told him, and this ain't what this says right here. I made a bargain with the Lord, and I told him, Lord, if it be your will, if it be your will that you let me live this day, if you let me live, because, see, I had called my family and told them to come on because they didn't gave me 24 hours. I had called my pastor, which was Cecil Coleman then, and told him to come on because they gave me 24 hours to live. My pastor wasn't getting there fast enough, so they called in the priest to read me my last rite. How many of you know that God has the last word? He has the last say. It ain't what the doctors say. It's what he says. He had the last say. So I began to, to bargain with God, to tell him, say, Lord, if it be thy will, let me live. Say, Lord, I'll live for you. I'll go. Now, y'all pay Close attention to what I'm saying here, because I know y'all done heard it before. I said, Lord, this is going to lead you to why I'm standing here. Because, see, God holds us accountable for what we say. He searches our hearts. We need to say what we mean and mean what we say, because he ain't no joke. He's going to bring it back to your remembrance, and he's going to hold you accountable for it. So I told him, said, Lord, if you let me live, because I done heard my mama say this so many times in her prayer, say, I'll go where you tell me to go. Yeah, this is what I told him. I'll say what you tell me to say. Lord, whatever it is, Lord God, I'll work it out. 
I'll do it, Lord. Let me live. This is what I told him. This is what I told him. Now, let me get back to my notes. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Now, those two remarkable women that I told you about who believed in the word of God, they practiced what they preached. One of which was Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. See, even when I was out there smoking crack, even when I was out there in them streets, there were people around me that were telling me, this ain't you. <laughs> this ain't you. What you doing out here? This ain't you. What are you doing out here? You're not going to. I saw people that were 80 years old and 90 years old, and my heart grieved. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be doing this when I get old. Lord, I don't want this to be me. But, you know, I couldn't find a way to put it down just then. But I was having people telling me. But it was that word, that word, that word, that word that says, train them up. Train them up in the way they should go. And when they grow old, and I'm going to tell you, I was old when I let go to crack. So when they grow old, they won't depart from it. So I came right back to that word of God, trusting and believing, trusting and believing and knowing, knowing what I had to do. Now that I had repented, I got to skip, y'all. I know y'all said I done went here, but I can't tell y'all the whole story. The devil told me, don't send it out. I'm going to say something. I love it. <laughs> now that I had repented, had been healed, delivered, and began a new life, I started going to church. But there was so much that I had to learn. I knew that I had to learn how to live for God. See, sometimes we get it confused. We go back to church. We repent. We come back before the altar, and we give it to God and say, Lord, take this away. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, but we don't really start. We don't really start. We go back out the door, and we do the same thing. We don't really give him nothing. We just go back to the same. But see, in order to get something, you got to give something. You know, so what we have to do is, so as I repented, I started working on what I had to learn. But I didn't think or could even imagine that it would consist of becoming a minister. I couldn't. I had a conversation with a niece of mine once, and I told her, I don't know how we got on the conversation, but I told her, I said, Tina, I need something to give to God of me. Y'all stay with me. Just bear with me, okay? She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm doing so much in the church. I'm the van driver. I'm the custodian. <laughs> van. <laughs> van driver. I'm the custodian. I'm the intercessor of prayer warrior. I'm the uh, mission department. I sing in the choir. I'm doing so much. And I said, I need something to do for me. And she said, what do you want to do, preach? I said, girl, go on. Ain't nobody trying to preach. No, I don't want to preach. She said, baby, ain't nowhere else for you to go but preach, auntie. That's it. You got to just go past the preach. So I said, okay. Now I'm giving y'all, I'm letting y'all know, I'm giving you these little pointers on how I got up here. <laughs> the more that I went to church, the more I heard the preaching, the more I read my Bible, the more I began to find me. Y'all thought I wasn't going to never get that, didn't you? The more I decided to find me. I found me, y'all. I found me. You know how you see some things? You see some, uh, we sit up and we watch TV. I got something for everybody today. I'm going to try my best, Pastor Hill, make this show. <laughs> I, found, I found me. What I did was, you know how you sit up and you watch a movie, and they are so inspired. We watch movies that inspires us to live our life better. We've watched them. We've seen people that have went through things, and we was like, oh, wow. Well, you know what? Here's your movie. 
here's your movie. Here's your story. He won't, I mean, this right here, give it all. For all you men that watch football on Sundays, this right here got some plays for you. It tells you how to, when, how, to, how to play that defense. Tell you how to play that defense. Defense, defense. Tell you how to do that defense. You know, we all sitting there watching that football. Hear your defense in here. Hear your defense, okay? Now, you know for us lonely women, huh, no, you lonely women when we need some comfort. It's in here. It's in here. Because, you know, for a while, you know, I had a boo laying up under me, Sister Stephanie. I had that boo laying up under me. And I still wasn't comfortable. I still wasn't comfortable. You know, praise to God. Praise to God. He said, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Number one, I was wrong. I was wrong, number one. That's why boo wasn't satisfying me. But God said, you ain't going to be satisfied doing nothing you ain't supposed to do. You better line yourself up with me. You better do what I tell you to do. You better say what I tell you to say. You better go where I tell you to go. And then, then, when you get through doing what I said do and doing what I said do and going where I said go, I'll send you a boo. But you better get that boo out from up under you. The word of God. He going to tell you, he said, I got your comfort right here. Now I'm going to tell you, when you sick, when you sick in your body and you feel like you need some healing, get that oil. Go down on your knees. Cry out to the Lord. He going to heal your body. He going to ease your making pain. Because he says his word says what? By his stripes we are healed. It's in him. It's in here. So I want everybody to know now I ain't found me in him by myself. I know it's a whole bunch of y'all in here. Whole bunch of us in here. Now let me see. Whole bunch of us. I said I found me. I found me. I found my situation. I found me in the word of God. My heart. My heart was pricked. And my mind began to change. It was made up to serve God. I found me in the story. Now, this way it gets good. Y'all going to say, huh? I found me in the story of Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. <laughs> now, I wasn't physically dead, but I was dead. I was dead. I was dead inside. And, I, and when I was told... When I was told, I started preparing for that impending death. I did. I started preparing, but I, like I said, I started preparing in the right way, so I done got ahead of myself. This right here had already been said. <laughs> it already went there. Now, <laughs> I done ran over there myself because I already had a preset. Now, come on. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. But listen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Uh, uh, uh. So, <laughs> so we're going to move on to John 11 and 4. When Jesus heard this, he heard I was sick. He heard I was sick. He said, this sickness, John 11 and 4, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God, might be glorified. Now, I ain't standing up here healed, healthy, and whole. I tried to live outside of his will, but his word said, I healed you for the glorification of who? Who he said healed me for? Okay, so if he healed me for the glorification of God, where am I supposed to be standing, y'all? Right here. Right here, preaching his word. He said, Go do what I tell you to do. Say what I want to say. See, some of this I had stressed out. I said I wasn't going to even say it, but I'm going to put it in. <laughs> Help today. Now, <laughs> I done preached that so I can move on from that. <laughs> I can move a little further. And then, and then, it was Matthew 20 and 22. It's the woman with the issue of blood. 
the woman with the issue of blood. See, in 20, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched him of him, of his garment. 21, for she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made you whole. Now, y'all know the word says that all we have to do is have faith the size of a mustard seed. All of this is going to come together because even though I was living a world of a life of sin out there in the world, I didn't forget what my mama taught me. I didn't remember that Sunday school lesson. Even I constantly had a talk with God. Constantly. I would go back to doing what I said, but I constantly. And he had to wait on me. He waited on me for that appointed time when I was tired. I was sick and tired of being the person that I was. I was sick and tired of being a bad mother. I was sick and tired of being a, a, a absent grandmother. I was sick and tired, sick and tired of being a crackhead. Sick and tired, y'all, I'm just gonna be real. I got sick and tired, sick and tired. He said, right then and there, right then and there, his word came forth, right then and there. It didn't take me a week. Y'all, y'all better hear this. When I was on my knees in that hospital after, I had my little talk with Jesus, told him all about my problem. What he did was immediately, right then and there, <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, I had no taste, no thirst, no yearning, no nothing. Got, ain't smoked no crack since then. I got almost 15 years clean and sober. I got 15 years praising God. When they said, when the doctor said, I'm dead. When the people said, she ain't gonna never be nothing but a crackhead. When they said, who? Thank you, my haters. <laughs> Thank you. Because you know, all of you, my haters, you bless me. You bless me. And I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Jesus, glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I no longer have an issue with drugs. But I want to say this. I had an incident couple of weeks ago, they had some painters that were working out Hickey Garden. And they had said, you know, they've been being friendly and giving me compliments on how my house was and everything. And, you know, and you know, really fri extra friendly. And one of them said, well, my dad's a preacher. He's a principal house preacher. I said, well, amen. He said, well, what are you? I said, what do you mean, what am I? I mean, what, what, are, we, what are you going towards? I said, what do you mean, what am I going? What do you, what do you represent? I said, well, okay. And, I am a non-denominational church. I said, our church is a non-denominational church. I said, but we serve the same God that the Pentecostals serve. It's all about him and ain't about us. He said, uh, yeah, somebody told me that you was a preacher. I said, yes, I am. He said, well, I got something to ask you. Now, many of you know me. Many of you know me from way back then, Dexter. From way back then, you know me. Life changed. Life changing experience. God done removed some things. He done smoothed me out, slowed me down. Because the next thing he said to me, y'all know. He said, well, please tell me. You ain't now one of them crackhead preachers. I said, what you mean crackhead preacher? He said them preachers that every time they get delivered from crack, they go up and want to stand before God and proclaim that they are preachers. I said, well, let me tell you something. I'm going to stand before God and proclaim that I'm a woman of God, a servant of God, called into holiness 
called to do what he told me to do, to preach his word. I said, but you know what? Yes, I am an ex-crackhead. I said, that's the way you want to put it. I said, but it does not define me. What defines me is my overcoming. I'm defined by my overcoming. Every time I hear somebody say, I remember when she used to, you define who I am today. Every time I hear somebody say, I remember when she used to walk the street. Well, you better not know right now I walk this floor. I walk this floor right here. I watch this flow. Some people say, y'all the churchiness folks I ever seen. I know where my deliverance is. I know where I get everything that I need. I know where everything that my family needs come from. All of my help comes from the Lord. I'm going to walk this flow. I don't walk them streets no more. I don't want to walk this flow. So like I said, I told him, that ain't what defines me. God defines me. My overcoming defines me. Although I used to be those things, what makes me great, my God says that I can too be great. I can be great. He says, I set you above and not beneath. I had you ahead and not to tell. Mm, Jesus, I know what my God said, and I know why I serve him. It does not define me. He didn't have nothing else to say. I won't tell y'all, I finished getting to my sermon, but... I gave him a little light sermon. He got tired of that sermon. He got him went on back to painting. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. I think I already preached this. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> I realize that there is a struggle for me. And there will always be a struggle. But I know that my struggles come only to make me strong. I know that there's nothing too hard for God. I know that God ain't going to put no more on me than I can bear. Because let me tell y'all something. He said, daughter, you done bear the abandoned building. You done bear the abandoned cars. You don't walk the streets with nowhere to go. You beg for food. You already did what you had to do. Now what I have for you is blessings. You have overcome the world as I have overcome the world for you. I have nothing for you, daughter, but blessings. I do what I do because I love my family. I do what I do because I love me. I do what I do is because I love God. Y'all, when I tell y'all I love him, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed sometimes. I find myself with nothing that I could. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Just can't say nothing else. But I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. Okay, let me find where I'm at. Then the Lord went again and showed me me. Now, y'all remember now, I'm showing me in here. Now, I know some of y'all in here. He went again and showed me me when he went to Jeremiah 1 and 15. <laughs> Jeremiah 1 and 15. Before I formed, the, formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before I came before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I anointed thee. I ordained thee. I prophet as a prophet without a nation. A prophet to the nation. I'm sorry, y'all, I can't see because I'm crying. My God has already known me. He already knows me. He already knew me, even when I didn't know myself. When I got the revelation and the understanding that I had been called, <coughs> he was right there leading me and guiding me back to Philippians 1 and 6. Be confident of this very thing, that he, 
which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the days of Jesus Christ. You see, God was telling me, don't you worry, daughter. You might stumble. You might fall. You might even get tripped up here and now and then. But don't worry about it. I got you. Because everything that I say has to come to pass. God is not a liar, nor is he a son of God that he should lie, not a son of man that he should lie. He's not a liar. So when he says something in his word, it's going to come to pass. So he told me, don't be afraid. I hope that my testimony has helped someone. I would like to leave you with this. God will confirm everything he does in your life. The day that I accepted my calling, I went home. Before I could get home, I got a text message. So I couldn't get it because I was driving. And my text message was from a man that I had been in a relationship, a man that I had had a relationship while I was out there smoking crack. We both were crack smokers. And even after I got out of that and got everything, I got saved, he got saved. We started a relationship, and when we started that relationship, it was revealed to me that he was Muslim, too. Y'all, I don't got to say it. Talk about unequally yoked. So the relationship did not last very long. But the day that I received my calling and told my pastor I was confessing my calling into the ministry, this is a text that I got. Joseph was a cheater. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Noah got drunk. Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Meridia Rhythm was a gossiper. Martha was a worrier. Gideon was insecure. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Eli was depressed. Moses stuttered. Zechariah was short, Abraham was old, and Lazarus was raised from the dead. Woo! The better brain was a crackhead in the name of Jesus. God does not call the prepared. He called those that he prepared. To God be the glory. 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 As I close, I leave you with this. God is no respecter of persons. We are all God's children, and he loves each and every one of us the same. And as in any loving relationship, loving relationship, I, you got to give something to get something. What he did for me, he can do for you. The question I put to you today, do we all love God the same? Do we love him the same? What are you willing to give God to get all that he has for you? And I challenge you to study, study to show yourself approved. I challenge you to find yourself in the word of God, amen.